Hey, my name is Tom Noski and I'm a photographer, digital artist and filmmaker based out of Melbourne, Australia. And today, Canon Australia have asked me to share with you my initial post-production workflow, how I organize my files and the hardware I use to do so. The first part of this video, and arguably the most important part of this video, is the hardware I use to store all my footage and photos. For me, I personally use the Lacey 6 Big RAID. The benefit of something like the 6 Big is that it has six individual hard drive bays. And for my option, I've got each of those six bays filled with four terabyte drives. The benefit of this is that I can go online and I can buy up to 16 terabyte drives and fill each of those six bays with 16 terabytes each, which makes it infinitely upgradable. As hard drives get bigger and bigger and bigger, I'm able to keep on replacing those and increasing the storage. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is I have it set up in something called RAID 5. Now what RAID 5 means is that one of those drives, one of my six drives, is set up as a redundancy. And that just means that my storage goes from 24 terabytes down to 20 terabytes, and that last drive is an emergency drive. It's kind of like a recovery drive in case something goes wrong. And if something goes wrong, Lacey will immediately start the recovery process and start to recover all of those files on the drive that is failing. Once that's failed, all I need to do is pop out that drive, change it with a new one, and Lacey will fill up that drive again and go back to RAID 5. The second part of this video that I wanted to talk about is what I do on my production days, on those important shoots when I don't have access to my 6 big, but I need to back up footage on the fly. For that, I have two one terabyte Samsung SSDs, labeled with SSD1 and SSD2. I hope I got those right. Yeah, SSD1 and SSD2. With these, I immediately make a double backup of all the footage I'm shooting throughout the day. So say, for example, I'm on a wedding or a commercial shoot, all I do is take out the card, replace it with a new one, plug that card into my computer, plug both of these in and create a double backup immediately. Then I know that regardless of what happens, I've got the footage on my card, I've got the footage on SSD1, and I've got the footage on SSD2. If, for example, I'm on location where I won't have access to my 6BIG for a number of days, what I then do is I take my double backup from here and I make a third backup onto a four terabyte hard drive. Now these things aren't as reliable as something like the 6BIG, but they provide a lot of quick storage. And as long as I have a triple backup of my footage, I know that I can bank on it being there when I get back. And then once I get back, I immediately take everything from here, put it onto the 6BIG, leave it on another spare drive that I then separate from my Lacey, format these drives, and we're good to go for the next shoot. The next part of this video is my organizational structure. So what I actually do with my footage once I've got it onto my computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my computer. I'm gonna open my Lacey 6 big folder. I'm gonna go over to 2021. I'm gonna go over to photography. I'm gonna go to professional and I'm gonna create a folder for February. So February, February. I'm then gonna go in here. Once inside February, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to create a new folder called the project name. So for this one, I'm going to go Hendrix Ballooning. And within here, I'm going to make a few folders to help me organize my workflow for the rest of this project. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make one folder for project. The next one I'm going to create is footage. I'm then going to make a new one called raw files. I'm going to go exported photos. Within here, I'm also going to have one for web and social. I'm then going to create one for exports, which is going to have my exported videos. I'm gonna have one for audio. I'm gonna have one for music and I'm going to have one for assets. Now I like to use this setup for every single one of my projects. I don't necessarily use every single one of these for every single one of my projects, but it's a good habit to get into just because you're able to go back to each of your projects a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, and know that you'll have all of your files in one place and know where you are and be able to go back after the fact. So once you've got everything set up and organized, you're now gonna jump into Lightroom and begin to organize your files. So my process that I like to use is I go over to import, I then come up 
to the folder that has my photos in it. So I'll come over to 2021. I'll come over to photography. I'll come over to professional. I'll go over to February, to Hendrix ballooning, and then down to raw files. And this will open up all the images that I use throughout the shoot. Now, what I would normally do in this case is I would come over here to uncheck all, and I would go and individually select the photos that I want to bring into Lightroom and leave the photos that I don't want to use out. Now, this is just a really, really simple thing that you can get in the habit of doing every single time you import. Yes, it takes a long time, but it saves you time in the back end. To save us time in this video though, I'm not going to show you that. All you need to do is click on each of the images, come down to this little checkbox. If you want to include it click if you don't don't click and go through each of the images selecting the ones you want to import and selecting the ones you don't i'm going to check all and i'm going to press import now once these images are imported i then go ahead and rate these images either five stars or zero i don't worry about one to four stars i find it a little bit redundant i used to do it i never used to use it so i would rate them and then never see those images again what i prefer to do is just keep it as a yes or a no am i going to use it or am i not going to use it and then the other option I use as well is I'll go and press P on my keyboard to flag an image. Now, the only time that I flag an image is if I want to retouch that image. If I want to go into Photoshop and make any changes, or if a client has asked me specifically to retouch an image, I'll flag that image just so I can look at a glance and know that I can get that image at any point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly just select 10 images that I want to edit for this case. Usually this is like 700 odd images. I would pick a lot more than 10, but I'm going to use 10 in this example. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to go into the develop panel. So this is where I can then edit my images. And then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to select rated. And what this is going to do is this is just going to highlight the images that I've rated five stars automatically and leave out all the other images, just clearing my workspace allowing me to focus on what I want to edit on. Now, a really simple process that you can start to use to speed up your workflow, because again, nine times out of 10 with client work, I'll edit one image in the color and style that I want to edit it in, and then apply that edit onto all of my images, adjusting the tone and contrast accordingly. Because obviously not every image is the same, but usually if I'm editing for a client, the style is consistent across the entire set. So if I was to look at these from a glance, if I highlight these four, these images have similar tone and color and then if I look at these five these five images have similar tone and color so what I'm going to do here to start is I'm going to go over here to this image here and I'm going to throw a quick edit on top of this so I'm going to get rid of this panel down the bottom here and I'm just going to quickly edit through this image Once I got myself an edit that I'm happy with, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go over here, I'm gonna select the first image that I wanna synchronize, and I'm gonna go and select the last image that I want that edit to be applied on. By holding shift on my keyboard, I'm gonna select this image, and that's gonna select all four of these. And then a button's gonna show up down here on the bottom right called sync. I'm gonna press this, and this is gonna bring up the synchronized settings panel. From here, I'm gonna select the ones that I wanna synchronize. If I've added local adjustments, make sure you uncheck local adjustments because obviously local adjustments are gonna be different from image to image. But in this case, I haven't added any, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna press synchronize, and that's gonna automatically apply that edit onto all of those images. So now if I click on here and I go to the right, and I look at that edit, it's a little bit dark. So what I could do here is I could bring up the exposure on this one just to balance it out a little bit better. Maybe bring up those shadows, maybe bring up those highlights, a little bit in the whites as well. And then if I go to this one, maybe this one's a little bit bright so I could bring that exposure down, bring those highlights down as well to about there. And you can see how this can start to speed up your workflow a lot more by using the sync button. You can also go ahead and go right click, go up to settings and go to copy settings. And then the same thing, going down to the image you wanna sync it on, going to right click, going to settings and then going to paste settings. But I like to use the sync button just cause it's easy to use and it's nice and quick. So once you've applied a base edit onto all of your images, you now wanna start thinking about your export settings. Now for me, I just have two exports. I have a social export and I have a web export. The reason why I have two and not three, some people are probably thinking you should have a social, a web and a print. But for me, my print and social exports are exactly the same. There are people out there that say that you should compress the size of your social posts. 
I don't really bother. I don't notice the difference. And I find that if I end up having three exports, it just ends up being a mess and I don't do it as frequently as I should. Whereas two has been something that's easy for me to stick to and it's just convenient over time. You're gonna find that workflows are a balance of convenience and what works for you and also the most optimized thing for that particular job. Now to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to this image here that we edited first. I'm gonna come over to file. I'm gonna go down to export. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna select the folder where I wanted to export it to. And for this first one, we're gonna go and we're gonna press social. So for this one, we're gonna choose here. We're not gonna put this into a subfolder because we've already got it in a subfolder. We're not going to change the name because I don't think it's important. If you wanna rename it, just keep in mind that it renames every single one of your exports, not just this single export. What I like to do here is I keep it as a JPEG. I'll keep the color space as sRGB and I'll leave these two settings alone. For here, I'm not gonna resize it because again, we're just using it for social and print. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. Now, if you want to add this as a preset is you can go over to add, you're gonna call this one print plus social export preset. And you're gonna save this as whatever you wanna save it as. I'm not gonna do that today. Now the second export settings that we're gonna talk about today is web optimized. So what I'm gonna do here to do so is I'm gonna go over to file, I'm gonna go over to export, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna save it in the folder that I want to save it in. So I'm gonna go over to choose, I'm gonna come back to exported photos and then I'm gonna go over to web and I'm gonna press choose. Again, not putting it in a subfolder because it's already in a subfolder. I'm not gonna change the name, not gonna worry about these settings here because it's going onto the website. We want it to be a JPEG, but I'm going to check resize and I've already got this set to 2160. So make sure you select the short edge. We're gonna go over here, keep the resolution at 300 and change the pixels to 2160. If you enjoyed this video, head over to my YouTube channel or my Instagram and follow me. They're both just Tom Noski online and thank you to Canon Australia for allowing me to make this video for you guys. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.